In this short video, I'm going to cover three of my most favorite marketing automations for lead nurturing and follow up. We are going to be talking about how to make your, your lead nurturing and follow up more effective because it's not just good enough to just build a list. We also have to do something with those leads that ideally move them towards a sale. So whatever you choose to call it, whether it is lead nurturing, middle of funnel, social selling, following up with your leads, managing your leads, or whatever you call it, this is where your money is made. It's after your lead raises their hand and says, yes, I want to exchange my information, whether it's my email, my name, my phone number, and I want to exchange that for something that you have, right? So this is a way for leads to be able to tell you, yes, I have the problem that you can help solve. And I'm interested at least enough to give you, give you a chance to contact me. This is where you're going to make the most money in your funnels. And this is also most often where businesses lose a lot of money, <laughs> lose a lot of revenue. And I was guilty of this for a very long time, losing so much money in what I affectionately call the clothes dryer of our funnel. And I'll explain what that means here in just a second. But let's jump in to first kind of just defining what lead nurturing is and then why I call it the clothes dryer of the funnel. Now up here on the screen, I'm going to be showing you a couple of the automations that I run in my own business and that we um, help our clients and customers implement inside their software. Uh, we have up here our champagne room software, which is our complete automation suite. Uh, it is where strategy meets tech and we're going to help you walk through some of the most effective ways to use automations to follow up with your leads. So first of all, what is lead nurturing? Lead nurturing is is really where we are building relationships, we're building trust, uh, we're, we're getting our, our leads used to, to associating us with, the, with solving the problem. And the goal of lead nurturing is to get people to buy from us <laughs> um, and people buy from, from those that they, they like and they trust. And building relationships can sometimes take a lot of time um, especially if your business doesn't have like a big presence or, you know, a reputation that precedes you just yet. And time is one of those things that can, can really make or break our business. And this is why I call this the clothes dryer of our, of our, um, our funnels. And this is why we tend to lose money with lead nurturing because it takes time. And we know that we're busy business owners and we don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to pop over here just to my whiteboard for just a second. And I'm going to draw us a funnel. Okay, so we have, and this um, can be any type of funnel. Uh, we also like to call it a champagne glass because um, <laughs> we like champagne around here. Um, that is the name of our automation software is the champagne room. So we have leads coming in our top of funnel. So they could be opting in to a lead magnet. Maybe they're joining your uh, community. Maybe they're joining your newsletter. Maybe they are opting in for a webinar, whatever the case. We have new leads coming in. So this right here at the top is where a lead first says yes. First says yes, please contact me, share a little bit more. Okay, so then as we go through our funnel down here at the bottom, this is where we actually have our transactions, our dollar signs down here at the bottom when they say yes with their credit card. Now inside of the middle is our lead nurturing, building rapport, establishing our credibility. It is what I call the clothes dryer of our funnel why? Uh, because when we throw a load of laundry into the dryer, hang with me, this is going to make a lot of sense in just a minute. Some of it dries pretty quickly. And I don't know about you, but laundry is one of my least favorite chores around the house. <laughs> but we know that when we put in like a big load of laundry, like some of it's going to get dry quickly, right? So some of these leads are going to just opt in and they're going to get a little bit of information, maybe watch your video or um, consume your lead magnet. And they are going to drop all the way down and they're just going to give you money, right? Those are our favorite type of leads and we love them. Um, but that's a very small percentage, right? That's like anywhere from two to 5% of our leads are going to be ready to, to, to move that quickly. But there's a lot of money in what I call the clothes dryer of our funnel. And what we know is that not all 
uh, clothing, right? We put we put a big fluffy towel in with a uh, thin little t-shirt. That towel is going to take a little bit longer to dry in the in the dryer, right? But we want to keep it tumbling because what we know to be true is that eventually that towel is going to dry, right? So what that means is that eventually those leads that were tumbling around in our clothes dryer are going to uh, start to trust us, start to to get more serious about solving their problems, and they are going to purchase. But if we don't nurture those leads, if we don't keep the, our dryers tumbling, then we lose a lot of money here. So lead nurturing is kind of like keeping the dryer going, right? And, and that's what we want. We want more people to pull out their credit cards. And sometimes that takes time. And a lot of us don't have it. And then we don't do it, <laughs> uh, which is why the subject of today's video is automating, automating. And I'm going to be showing you how to some different ways to do that. Three of my favorite uh, ways today. So what is marketing automation for this lead nurturing? It is using our technology, right? So we use um, our champagne room. We have a full automation suite where we are tumbling our leads over and over. Um, and this is what's going to save us time, ensure that our leads are being taken care of, speed up the entire process, which is what we need. And um, I, the way that I have um, automated my own business and the way that we help our customers and clients automate their businesses, like we can automate up to 70% of our business because there's 70% uh, of, of what we do is repeatable. And if it's repeatable, it can be automated. So we need to marry up the right strategy with the right technology to make this happen. All right. So let's get into it. Three of my most bestest favorite <laughs> automations for lead nurturing. So now let's uh, let's talk about it. So the first one, we're going to start with very simple with a marketing uh, automation called just email drip campaigns, right? So if you have uh, if you have started to build your list, you know that someone opts in, right? So typically, how it looks, I'll move this to the side, is we will have. Um, some sort of funnel built, right? Where we are asking them to give us their name and email in exchange for some sort of value, right? So we're kind of selling them. Uh, we're going to give them something and they can click here and they're going to put in their information and then they are going to get the thing, right? And so we're going to kick off, we're going to send them some emails, we're going to drip these emails out, you know, really um, depends on the, you know, the frequency and the time of what we're going to drip these out, but we're dripping these emails out. And they're going to get these over, uh, over time, right? What are these emails doing? This is uh, nurturing them. <laughs> this is nurturing them. This is going to be uh, congratulations. You just got this amazing thing here. Make sure you go get it. We're going to remind them to get it. We are going to we're going to um, uh, talk to them and get them to take the next step. Right. And so we're going to just continue to follow up with these leads. And inside of these emails, these are automated. Maybe they're going out, you know, one uh, one day in between. And this is as simple as it, it gets to be, right? So let's take a look at how to make these email drip campaigns more effective and some ways to optimize these drip campaigns. So I'm going to pop over here and I'm actually going to scroll over. So this is just an example of a um, a quiz using a quiz funnel and having an automated drip campaign that comes after it, right? So in this example, I love uh, using quiz funnels as lead magnets for a lot of reasons, um, but uh, whatever the whatever the thing that they're opting into, we want to have a series of emails dropping out with a goal, of course, of them taking that next step. So it could be. You could use uh, your lead magnets to fill your next uh, conversion event. Your, maybe you've got a, a webinar or masterclass, whether it's live or evergreen. You can use it to, to use to do that. You can use it to keep your sales calendar full. You can use it to sell your products, right? But this is this is kind of the email drip campaign. So let's talk about it. So we want to make sure. So I'm going to give you three tips to make sure that your email drip campaigns are effective, which means they're actually 
doing the job of building relationships and moving your leads into a sale. All right. So number one is your emails are relevant to the thing that your leads opted in for. Right. So if your leads are opting into a quiz, for example, then your email follow up needs to be relevant to the quiz that they took. Uh, the, the, the promise of the, the, you know, the problem that your quiz attracted them um, to help them fix. Right. Or give insight on and their unique quiz results. So we, we don't want to flip the switch or talk about something very different or even a little different. Right. They, they raise their hand for a reason. So make sure that your emails are relevant to the thing that your leads opted in for to begin with. Okay, so they're going to be able to get what they expected. And that builds that little bit of trust. It establishes our credibility in the fact that, yes, this person actually knows a little bit about this topic of the thing I opted in for, right? So make sure that your emails are relevant. Number two is to make sure that emails are frequent enough that your leads begin to recognize your name um, and uh, actually kind of consume some of your content. And, and sometimes, you know, like, well, what do they, they say that it takes like seven or eight uh, touch points to actually move your leads to get them to do that next thing. And they're not even going to necessarily open all these emails. So we need to have more of them. Okay. Um, but the beauty is, is it's not manual. We're going to set it up once and it's going to be completely automated. So make sure that your emails are frequent enough so that people don't opt into something and then forget that they even opted into it. And number three is to make sure that your emails provide two things, um, some value and an invitation value and invitation. Um, you have no idea how many people I have worked with who came to me and they said, I don't, my, my stuff isn't working. I have a sales problem. And then the real problem was that there wasn't any sales even happening. There was no invitations, no offers being made. <laughs> so you have to make offers often all the time. And no, this isn't overly salesy. We want to provide our, our, and nurture our leads and provide value, but we also want to make sure that when they're ready, they're able to say yes. So coming back to our clothes dryer analogy here, um, some of our leads are going to be, are going to be the, the, the two to 5%, right? And they're just going to come in. They're going to drop all the way to the bottom. If we make an invitation for them to do that. And the rest of our leads are going to tumble around and they're going to get uh, dry um, at different times. And so we want to make sure that we're always extending value, call to action, value, call to action. So take a look at your email drip campaigns, make sure that you have them, make sure that they are frequent and long enough, make sure that they are effective, make sure that you are extending invitations. All right. Number two, now we're getting into, uh, we're going to get a little more advanced. So for the first, my favorite automation is just simply following up with your leads and an email drip campaign that is relevant to the thing that they opted in for. Number two is audience segmentation. Uh, so this is an, a, a way to automate the actual um uh, the, the actual segmentation and like putting your leads into categories. So that is really, really cool because when you can make your lead follow up and those email drip sequences uh, more effective, more personalized, they are going to convert better. They, they just are right. Because we're going to really be in our audiences uh, heads. We're going to know what they want. We're going to know what their interests are. And so when I say audience segmentation, it's just a fancy way of saying like you're putting your leads into groups based on their interests, their behaviors or whatever, right? And so what we want to think about is if we have groups of leads that are have something in common, then we can talk to them a little bit differently. And this creates a personalized and very targeted lead nurturing process, and it can be completely automated. Um, and yes, you just build it once and use it for years and years to come. Now, my favorite way to do this is through a quiz funnel. If you don't have a quiz funnel in your business, make sure that you check out my free three-day challenge where we will show you, walk you through step-by-step -step how to design, build, and launch a quiz funnel for your business. Uh, quiz funnel acts as a lead magnet, a lead qualification tool, and allows us to segment our audience based on the quiz results. Okay. So I'm just going to use this as an example. Um, let me come back over here for just a second, grab over here. So if we're using our quiz funnel and let's say we're going to services off the back of our quiz, then once your leads come in, they opt in, they take the answer a series of questions, and we're going to put them into categories based on how they answer their quiz question. Guess what? This is automated lead segmentation because now we know something about our audience based on how they answer some questions. 
So now we can segment them um, into different categories and we can follow up with them in a very unique way that varies based on their quiz results. <laughs> and that's really cool because it is going to um, do a lot of things for us. It's going to maybe we want to sell different things to different people or maybe we want to make recommendations based on how warm they are, how ready to buy they are, how qualified they are, et cetera, et cetera. So you can actually use your funnels and it doesn't have to be a quiz funnel, but if you can, uh, there's lots of ways to do that. Um, but, but I love a quiz funnel cause it kind of just does all of it in one. Um, and we can actually segment, qualify, tag our leads and follow up with them in a very, like something that feels very custom and personalized, but it's completely automated. So that is, is really, really cool. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is, um, my third, uh, most favorite, bestest, best performing, most effective um, uh, lead nurturing automation. And that is buyer behavior tracking. Buyer behavior tracking. What does that mean? It means putting our leads that are closer to the sale on a different follow-up system than those who might still need a little bit more nurturing or a little bit more time. So tracking buyer behavior allows you to prioritize your leads efforts on the ones who are most likely to buy, um, nudge them along and convert them into a sale. So with the right strategy and the tech, this is actually pretty simple to do, even if you're not techie. So let's think about um, some buyer behaviors. What could be an examples of buyer behaviors? Well, opening emails, right? So we are, if we are dripping emails out, to our leads, well, one a behavior that we could track and 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 um, segment our audience on is they're actually opening these emails or they're actually clicking the links in our emails, right? Um, that's definitely one that we can we could identify that those leads are they're hungry for what we have because they're consuming our content. Okay, um, another one could be like if we are trying to sell something, right? Which hopefully we all are extending invitations and we have a sales page, right? And so everybody, so this is your sales page, right? Sales page. Now, everybody who clicks on this page, whether that's from, you know, social media or that is from, um, your emails or wherever it is that you are driving people from, maybe it's open carts. But if people are clicking on the sales email, then that's a buyer behavior. Okay, that's buyer behavior. Maybe it is um, they are downloading resources. So maybe inside of one of these nurture campaigns, you are providing um, an extra resource or something for them, a blog, a video. Maybe you're inviting them to your Facebook group. Well, those are hot, hotter leads. More that's buyer behavior because they want to get to know you more if they're downloading resources. Booking calls, same, right? If they are consuming your videos, like if they are watching your videos, um, then that's a buyer behavior. And of course, if they are over here on your sales page, right, and they start to check out, right, so they're on your order form, if they are putting their name and information in there, but they just don't finish, right, they abandon the cart, that's buyer behavior. So it's really cool to track those behaviors, but it's really even cooler to do something about it. So when those leads start to exhibit those buyer behaviors, we can actually automate something to help nudge them along, help, you know, um, encourage them to take the action that they already have, are kind of saying like, I really want it. I'm, I'm watching all your stuff. I just, you know, maybe they've got a lingering objection. Maybe they have a question. Um, and so we want to help them along in the process. So here's a couple of here's a couple of ways that you can, you can, you can set this up. I'm just going to give you a couple because they're literally, um, just tons of ways that we can do this and think about it. Uh, but let's say um, you have, let's talk about video consumption. So if you have, um, let's say your funnel is they are going to opt in. So this is where they're going to give you their email and stuff, you know, lovely, pretty funnels here. Um, and they're opting into a webinar. Let's just use that as an example. Um, it could be a VSL, video sales letter. It could be any kind of video, right? So they're opting in and they're going to see you on a video where you are going to deliver um, value and then you're going to make a call to action, right? So, you know, maybe this is your button to buy now. Okay. Um, but, but here's the thing. If they're watching this video, 
we can actually track how much of the video that they are are watching. So if you make your pitch at about 50%, like you halfway through the video, well, guess what? Everyone who makes it to your pitch, you can segment and tag them. And maybe they're like, they're the ones that go into your sales sequence. So for all these people who are opting in, you can start to categorize them. So maybe um, we'll just keep it simple. We'll just do like three. So maybe this is 25% of your video. This is 50% of your video. And this is, um, let's just say 75% of your video. Okay, so now when a lead hasn't even watched as 25% or less, we can email them and encourage them to go back, right? Um, go back and finish the video, finish the video. Maybe at 50%, right? And we're gonna keep doing this. This is a sequence here. Lovely emails here. <laughs> um, if they've watched 50%, then we know that they've at least started the pitch. They know what the offer is. And we can encourage them to, you know, um, purchase. So maybe they get dumped into our sales sequence. Now, if they watch 75% or greater, well, maybe now we're following up with them and we're like, okay, we know you want this, right? We know like we could, we could even do cool things like alert, send alert, like this person, this lead is really hot, have the sales team follow up with them, or we could send kick off SMS. We could, you know, there's so many cool things that we can do and we can talk to these leads differently because we know that these people over here are the 25% or less, they haven't even watched the video yet. So it really doesn't make sense necessarily to talk to them about the offer. We need to get them to go back, right? So we can segment and, um, based on how, uh, how, many, how much buyer behavior are our leads. Now, very similarly, let's say this wasn't a video, but this was a, um, let me just say, move this over. Let's say you're doing, um, uh, you're in open cart and you're sending out um, emails and this is your sales page, right? Your sales page. You can also kick off automations, different automations based on who is viewing this page. So if you're sending out emails or if you're in open cart and you've got kind of two groups of people, people who not very hot. They're not even looking at your stuff. Maybe they didn't even participate in your launch or whatever. And you've got these people who are clicking on your sales page. They're reading it. They're, 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 they're um, obviously engaged enough to check out your sales page. You can really talk to them differently. So even if both of these groups of people have, uh, are going through your sales sequence, we can talk to group two a little differently. So what we love to do is we'll send out um, a, a sales email. So this is a sales email inside. It's got some, some content, whatever, and then it's got a link to go purchase. People who click that link, we sent, we will branch off over here and we will send them another email. So they're going to be getting like what we like to call sales nudges. And it's going to just talk to them and it's going to say, hey, I know you're checking out our page. Hey, I know you're interested in this. Uh, what questions do you have? Or, or how can I support you? Maybe offer to book them a call, things like that, just because they clicked. Whereas the people who don't click, they're just going to get another automated email. Okay. And we can do this in every single email that we send out. And the people who are clicking are getting double the touch points, right? And uh, we can just continue this on and on. Really, really simple to set up and really cool. Now, the 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 one that everybody should have anytime they have um anytime there we go um anytime that we have a sales page with you know we have our order form right here and we're gonna have a what's called a two step two step order form. Two steps right there. Two step order form here. And the first step is just going to be getting their information. Right. And the second step is going to be getting their credit card information. Now what we can do is that everybody who fills out the first step but doesn't put in their credit card information for whatever reason, maybe the dog barked, maybe um, they didn't have their credit card uh, right there with them, whatever the reason they didn't actually finish the purchase. Well, this can trigger trigger a set of emails um, or SMS or a combination of the two 
Um, it also can alert our sales team, all that stuff, right? Um, and this is what this is going to do is we're going to be able to uh, first remind them um, and maybe they just got busy and they meant to come back. Uh, we could start to overcome objections. We can, um, you know, really focus in on a benefit on this one. And maybe if that none of that works, we can, you know, either offer to get on a call with them or we can give them a coupon code, right? And it's all driving them back to what they started, which is finishing their purchase. So that's pretty cool, right? So if it, like the best part of this is that like now you're, you're as your leads are beginning to experience um, or, or make these like buyer like behavior, we can tag them, we can um, move them to a different place in our CRM, we can we can um, segment them, we can, you know, um, score them, at, like actually add up like how many times are they opening emails and clicking links, we can make custom custom offers, we can prioritize uh, if we have a sales, if we're the sales team, or if we have a sales team, we can prioritize the people that we're, we're reaching out to. And we can always just open up our beautiful CRM, whether you're using the champagne room or you've got something else that's working for you. We can open it up and we can say, wow, these are our hottest leads. These are the people who are closest to the sale. So um, hopefully this was, was helpful for you. So we covered email drip campaigns. We covered um, uh, segmenting and qualifying our, our leads. And we covered, you know, tracking buyer-like behavior and how to put all of this on autopilot. So I am so excited. Um, so again, if you want more information on how we do this, um, uh, if you, how we bring a uh, strategy together with tech, because you got to have both, um, then let us know. If you don't have some of these, these funnels in place, then I always recommend starting out with the quiz funnel because it is one that can do a lot of what we talked about here today all in one. <laughs> like it's all baked into one funnel. It's beautiful. Um, and we can show you and help you along with that for free inside of our, um, our, our quiz funnel challenge. And so you can get all of that done in under a week. So just let us know here and we will help you get registered for that. I hope you have an amazing week and have fun with some automations in your lead nurture this